so when Young Thug got arrested, suddenly it became a story that people were interested in. But really, like Eric had been working on studying it for a long time, and it had been an issue for the last 30 plus years. Yeah. So we were we weren't new to it. I think the the sort of personal connection comes from how it could happen to anyone. Yeah. Honestly, um, the many people that had no like didn't didn't do it <laughs> didn't do the crime that they're that they're sort of um sentenced for me personally i i just express i and, I, and a lot of artists i know um don't really take that into consideration um and maybe someone would suggest that you should but i feel like as soon as you do that it sort of takes away from the artistic process and so what's better to do is to make sure that it's not, you know, that that we keep sort of checks and balances on on the people that are trying to are, use it to incriminate. I mean, it is ambitious, uh, but precisely, you're not seeing any other fictional form, musical or otherwise, weaponized like this in court. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it doesn't feel like a particularly radical position to say, hey, how about this art form? By the way, you know, the most popular musical form in the country, how about we treat that the, the same way we do all of these other artistic forms? It's still going to be um, a lift, um, but that, you know, our advocacy, part of the our advocacy is focusing um, on, at the very least, limiting um, the extent to which the state can introduce lyrics um, in criminal cases. We started out the documentary thinking that we needed a bunch of high profile celebrity rappers. Like Tony uh, Killer Mike. Exactly. Yeah. Tony Killer Mice and Ruth frankly, I mean, there's a bunch of very famous rappers who signed the legislation in New York that that failed and is now stalled slash attempting to move forward. So there's a bunch of people who are aware of the issue on the in the highest level, in the highest echelons of hip hop, people who would not really be touched by the issue because of their the enormous resources that they have now to fight uh, the state. Were their lyrics taken literally as they are for the, the, the hundreds and thousands of other rap artists who don't have those resources? So we thought originally we need to go to the upper echelons and talk to those people and get them to talk. But what happened was the film wanted to be about the people who were the most vulnerable, who had been in and out of court in and out of prison with their lyrics being part of those cases. And it turned out that what we thought was maybe a bug ended up being a feature of the doc, which was that to, to talk not to the people who have $5 million to pay for a private attorney, but talk to the people who end up stuck with the public defender, Yeah, um, which is the vast majority of the people who deal with the issue. Yeah, and Killer Mike there, it, I mean, he brought, I guess, some star power, but I don't think that's really the reason we brought him in. Uh, I've been working with Mike for a decade almost. Um, and largely on this issue, he and I have written stuff together. We appear on panels together. He's really made this a centerpiece of his advocacy. So he kind of had to be in it um, in a way. Uh, but because Eric told us, to, yeah. yeah. No, no, I don't mean it that way. I just mean it would have felt incomplete had he right. not been there. Uh, and I really like the assortment of people we got. In fact, the person who closes the the artist that closes it out, um, uh, Shy K. Uh, he's a Bronx rapper. And I had not heard of him. And so I was watching the documentary, an early cut of it. And my kid in the other room was like, was that Shy K? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, so you guys actually, you came on to some rising Absolutely. talent. Uh, it was terrific. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But someone who is still, could very well find himself um, in this situation. Because right. he hasn't reached, you know, the Jay-Z heights. Right. Uh, where he starts to maybe become more immune to it. And we see that there's a, there's a, uh, uh, there's a racism baked into the way that people look at this black art form, but then the documentary says that it's, you know, this is hip hop is not the first genre in which this happened. It actually goes back, just hit the rewind button, soul music, jazz, rock, rhythm and blues, Negro spirituals, slave songs, back to the first slave ships that came over here. Um, so we take it all the way back to the 1670s to show that this is, this is how deep the problem goes. And, to get there, you just have to know, uh, because people walk into a jury, they're not thinking about how they are how they are the next link in a chain that has lasted 400 years, mm -hmm. and that's how insidious and deeply rooted it is. And hopefully, the documentary begins to untangle that and put a spotlight on it and and change something.